I'm Rob Lucuria, Senior Editor at Gold Derby here with Joe Weissman, co-creator and showrunner and writer on CBS's Ghosts. Joe, you adapted Ghosts from the original British series alongside your collaborator, Joe Port. Um, so, I mean, it's a kind of obvious question, but I'm honestly curious how you go about adapting material like this for an American audience. Like, what can you point to specifically uh, where the show honours the spirit of the original, but really goes your own way uh, to make it something of your own? Yeah, well, that's a great question because, you know, something uh, when you get asked to adapt something, you're like, why does this need to be adapted? Why why would this work here? And in, in this particular case, it seemed like an incredibly portable idea. You know, the premise is there's a house that has is inhabited by a bunch of ghosts who lived there uh, for the past centuries. So why not place it here and then you fill it with, you know, American ghosts or wherever the location that you're gonna do. You know, quite, quite honestly, they should do it all over the world. There should be a ghost Peru, there should be a ghost China, there should, you know, it's, it's very portable. So um, yeah, we just started talking about what are some American archetypes? We came up with like 20 to 30 ghosts and started to talk about each one and tried to figure out what would make a good grouping, you know, make sure there's not overlap with various stuff. Um, so it just felt like it was, it was, it was almost a no-brainer to, to adapt it here. Um, yeah, the pilot introduces us um, to the main ghostly inhabitants of the, of the mansion and they're super compelling and amusing. Um, but I felt like you can't help but almost root for them to succeed like uh, in scaring off Samantha and Jay like uh, is that part of the allure of creating a show like this where we can poke a bit of fun at the two humans um like at their expense who have unwittingly gotten themselves into this situation absolutely yeah and and that's actually the fun thing about the pilot is like you don't know what's like they very well may have succeeded in scaring them off. And then it would just be like, okay, it's gonna be you know a parade of livings coming in. In the pilot, uh, Samantha, the main living character uh, has a horrible accident and goes to the hospital. And normally if you're at home watching a pilot and one of the main characters goes to the hospital, they're not going to die. That's just simply, in this case, she may have. Uh, she didn't, she, you know, this is, that's the sort of, she was dead for three minutes and that's what gave her the ability to see the other ghosts. So it was, it was, it was a, it was a very fun pilot because you didn't really know what was going to happen. As soon as you sort of have this premise of like ghosts are real and they're here, anything uh, feels like uh, is, is fair game. So would do, was there ever any discussion about drawing that out later into the season where Samantha would have the near death experience and then see the ghosts or were you and Joe Port clear about your vision um, for the show that it would, would need to happen relatively early on? We really wanted it to happen uh, early on. And we used, uh, all, all credit goes to the British creators of, of the original series, Ghosts. Uh, our pilot and second episode uh, follows theirs very uh, closely narrative wise. And I just thought they did a really brilliant job of setting up this premise and getting it up and running quickly. Because um, I, I love the first two episodes, but I feel like once you get that premise yeah. set up, you're off and running. And it's, it's, that's when the, the real fun uh, starts to happen. Um, so yeah. we, yeah, we wanted, we thought, we thought that was very well done and wanted to keep that for our series as well. Yeah, I think after episode two or three, it really starts to go off on its, and, and does its own thing. Um, so let's go back to the beginning though, because you have to conceptualize who the ghosts are. That's critical. You get that wrong, the show maybe doesn't work as well. Um, and that's not only casting, but also just conceptualizing the characters themselves. Um, did you find any in particular challenging to get right? Or did, and were there many that you had that you decided not to include in the show? Yeah, for sure. You know, like I said, we came up with like 25 to 30 and we ended up with, with uh, eight ghosts. Um, you know, it's an unusually large cast. It's, it's mm -hmm. I think if, if it hadn't existed as a, a series already, Joe and I would never have you know, do a half hour network sitcom with 10 regulars. Uh, but that was part of the, the charm was this large cast. Um, but yeah, we, we spent a lot of time talking about uh, all these different ghosts and who they could be. Um, and then, like you said, the casting is just, you know, we really lucked out. We, we just have like this, this killer crew of people. And at first it, it almost seemed like a, like a burden. Like we have, we have 21 minutes to tell a story. We have 10 characters to service. Um, but it, it the sort of frantic pace that creates, I think uh, lends to sort of like the tone of the show. And it also, 
and now in series, and now that we're doing a lot more episodes, gives us a lot of directions to go to exploring every character's background, uh, pairing them up and seeing, you know, what stories come out of, of all these different, you know, pairings that we can do. So it's, it's, it's a, uh, it, it's a, it really is like a, an embarrassment of riches. Yeah, that's actually a really good point, because I wondered, given the size of the cast, you, the pressure involved as the creators and the writers to ensure that they all that they're, all of their narratives are moving forward throughout the season. Um, did that pressure start to subside when you realised you had plenty of time and you were able to focus a bit more on one or the other or a couple of them? And do you find that freeing? Because then you can actually start to make it more character driven. It's about these people, not necessarily just always about the concept. Yes, yes, we wanted to make it about, I think that's, you know, after we did the first couple episodes and we were up and running, I think our our, our series, you know, started to become its own thing. And I think that's because, you know, like story comes from character and we have different characters. There, there, there's a few of our characters that are sort of analogs of the original series, but, uh, you know, we came up with mostly original characters. And so we just started talking, you know, w what various backgrounds we could find out about them or backstories. Um, uh, so yeah, it's, it's, it, it became very exciting to, to realize the possibilities. And so then apart from breathing a sigh of relief, um, what does it mean to you that Ghosts has been so successful for CBS? Because in this day and age, there are so many options and choices for us as viewers. And yet this show, like a couple of others, has really risen above the pack and has become a, 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 a huge hit for CBS. That's awesome. I mean, honestly, I, I am grateful because uh, first of all, so many people work so hard on this series. You know, it's it's really hard to make a TV show and it doesn't always come together. And even when it does all come together, sometimes it doesn't find an audience. So the fact that we've been able to to make a show that we're all proud of and it's finding an audience, I mean, I'm, I'm just like, I really am just so grateful. And I'm really grateful to CBS for taking a chance. This is not like a traditional CBS half hour show. Um, they really, and, and from the very beginning, they, they loved the concept, they loved the original British series, and they believed in it. They, they you know, gave us all the resources and really promoted us uh, and have just been wonderful creative partners. It's, it's, been, it's been, it's a dream. It's like, it's, it's, it's really been a fun ride. Because yeah, you're right, it's not, it's not a traditional broadcast sitcom. And it's even a huge hit on Paramount+. Plus. So people are either getting it through their streaming service or they're getting it when it airs on TV every week. Why do you think that is? It's um, it's it, it's a pretty niche show. It's about a you know, it's it's a genre show as well as being a comedy. Um, and why do you think that it's become so popular broadly with people? What do you think it is about your writing that people seem to be really attracted to it? Yeah, yeah I, I mean, I, I don't know 100. Like, if I had to guess, like like you said, there's a lot of content out there now, and so it's really hard to break through. And the show uh, looks different than most half hour sitcoms. You know, it's shot beautifully. It looks like you know, like a period drama piece. Uh, mm -hmm. And it's it's you know, it's a fun, uh, high concept that I you know is is not you don't you don't turn on the tv and see five different versions of this premise so i think i think you know i think those things stood out uh and sort of like draw people's attention if they're you know if you're looking for something to watch it's it's different than everything else you've seen yeah that that's precisely what attracted me and my family um it's different it, it kind of stands out it's beautiful to look at um and it's super funny and the concept the concept drew me in and of course if it, if it wasn't a good show it wouldn't have that concept would have gotten you maybe one or two episodes but it's so compelling and it's so endearing like these go some of them are they're all bonkers but um I find some of them to be just super compelling I, I just wondered did, have any of them really surprised you do you conceptualize them to begin with and then you write the season and have any moved in a direction that perhaps you weren't expecting I mean, as far as being surprised, no, but we, you know, we didn't like in, in the first season, the uh, the arc for Isaac, who's sort of our closeted Revolutionary War uh, 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 character, um, that became, uh, we didn't plan that arc from the beginning, but throughout the first season, he would sort of like come to be comfortable with who he is to, 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 the, to the point where at the, in the final episode, he finally uh, tells the, the British uh, officer who we've sort of had a, will they, won't they, how he feels, you know, and in a few episodes before that, he came out to Hetty, the, uh, you know, the, 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 the matron of the house. Yeah. Um, and so that just sort of just happened organically. I think it was, 
you know, we did, because the character was trapped in the past, you know, we were able to do maybe a little, some anachronistic closeted jokes that, you know, maybe haven't seen in a while, but, and it made sense for that. But I feel like we were getting sick of writing them. And I think Brandon Scott Jones, who plays Ike, was also getting, so it's sort of like, okay, well, maybe this is an opportunity to, to give this character, this person who's been closeted for over two centuries and, and let him sort of have this win without also without fundamentally changing who he is, you know, he's still pompous and, and full of himself. And, uh, and now we have like a fun relationship to, to sort of explore in season two and hopefully beyond. Yeah. And that makes us care about these people. I think fundamentally that's super important to keep us engaged. Um, Joe, it's a great show. Congratulations on some really beautiful work. And we're going to bring you back for our group chat shortly. Oh, wonderful. Thank you so much.